next on the Broadway show, Making History in Oz and on Broadway. You'll meet Brittany Johnson, the first woman of color to lead the Broadway musical Wicked. Tony Award winner Katrina Link is here to talk about starring in company on Broadway and her big role in the hit Netflix series Ozark. Plus, stepping into the Gilded Age with Kelly O'Hara to talk about her role in the HBO drama. I'm Tamsin Fidel and this is The Broadway Show. Each and every week we are fired up because Broadway is officially back. I'm so glad you could be here for The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. has changed for good. That's because Brittany Johnson is the first black woman to play Glinda full time in Wicked. When she floated onto the stage in her magic bubble that first night, she arrived to a standing ovation. She also got a two minute standing ovation to close the show. We talked to Brittany Johnson about making history on Broadway. Hi, I'm Brittany Johnson. I play Glinda in Wicked the Musical on Broadway. I grew up singing. I wasn't really introduced to theater until like middle school, high school. And I saw my first show on Broadway was 110 in the Shade with the Audra McDonald. I just never seen someone that looked like me just playing a, a person, like a, just a regular person and singing like a complete angel. Seeing her do that, at least subconsciously, did something to me. It, it, it showed me that there was a place for me. I knew that when I came down in the bubble that the audience was probably going to be very excited, which is so humbling. But I also knew that if I clicked even for a moment into Britney, that first of all, I'd probably erupt into tears and that's not helpful. That's not Glinda's story at the moment. It's about remembering that moment for Britney the person, but also remaining true to Glinda in that moment. Really all I was thinking about was get through, get through it got through this show. <laughs> now, today, I feel a lot more relaxed and excited to, to play. I kind of feel like I am, I'm blazing a new path. And I, I'm excited to be able to do that. I'm, I'm excited to know that there are people that I can lean on. Audra, if you're listening, can I call you? <laughs> that, you know, like I, I do have those people, but this feels like a very different moment. It's something that you, you can't really dream until it happens. And now it's like, now that it's happened, I, I do hope that it, it's something that other people get to dream now. By the way, Audra McDonald was listening. She sent Brittany flowers just after we wrapped our interview. Katrina Link is a Tony Award winner and star of Company, one of Broadway's funniest musicals. But in addition to seeing her on the New York City stage, you can also catch her in one of Netflix's most popular shows. I caught up with Katrina to talk about the return of Broadway and her pivotal role in the hit TV series, Ozark. Your greatest threat will always come from the inside, Marty. Never forget that. I almost jumped out of my bed when I saw you on my favorite show ever. So I was very, very excited as I was watching Ozark. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's also my favorite show. I was uh, obsessed, obsessed. Were you watching it before and how did all yes. that come about? I was a rabid fan and um, during the apocalypse there, I got a, you know, a, a Zoom audition for their final season and I was like, what, uh, uh, what? So. You know, it was this weird thing where we're on Zoom auditioning and then I got a call back and I was like, what is happening? And that was also on Zoom. And then I was on some road trip somewhere and I got the call from my um, from my manager that I booked it. And I was like, what? What a different role too for you, right? I mean, that's just like, I feel like Broadway is such a sweet and talent and stage. <laughs> and then this, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> opioids. <laughs> opioids, yeah, and Claire's like, you know, she's like everybody on that show is just is doing like they believe they're doing the best they can in the situations that they're in. So she's really she's really trying. Phone rings, door chimes, in comes company. Let's talk about the revival of Company because that is exciting. And uh, that show is just, I don't know, it's just, it gets, it gets so many smiles, you know, it, it really does. It's so thrilling to be 
back after having taken the, taken the hiatus for two years that we all, you know, that everybody did. So it's, it's definitely a, a, a pinching yourself moment to get to do this show and with this incredible cast and with Patti Lapone, who is just amazing and just there 200% every night and so authentic and still exploring and like examining the scenes and the songs and the entire cast is just consummate professionals and so funny so funny and the, sh the show itself is really you know embracing the humor that's in the script and the music so it's really it's really a lot of fun to do really a lot of fun for people that have not seen company what should they know about it and and why should they go see it if they need a laugh it's a great thing to do <laughs> um and it you know it takes place in manhattan now so it's um it's you know about this mm, successful bachelorette who's having a milestone birthday and kind of gets pushed into the surprise party held by her married friends. Um, so it kind of, it's an exploration of what it's like to live in Manhattan, what it's like to be single, what it's like to be in a relationship, um, commitment, fear of commitment, the need for human connection, how do we get it? And um, it just kind of celebrates all the things about what it is to be alive now. I also think it's very pivotal after a pandemic because the need for human connection, we didn't even realize we needed it, wanted it, cared about it. People are really appreciative of it in a different way. Definitely. And we, we felt that for sure at our first preview that, I mean, we, we thought it would be exciting, you know, for us and maybe the audience, but it was just that, that feeling of celebration from the audience of like, yay, we're all here and we're sharing this story together in this space together and we're connecting with the audience and with our fellow actors. It was really, um, a really extraordinary moment of realizing that that need for connection and celebrating that connection. We have company. Um, Ozark, are you coming back for the next season too? Well, obviously you are, right? The next, the next half. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else you have going on? I'm just reveling and getting to do company right now, and just thrilled, and that that's that's what I'm doing. I have a confession to make. I am madly in love. Perhaps he feels the same. But I've never actually spoken to him of your love. I think. <laughs> It's the classic tale of secret love from afar. Peter Dinklage stars in Sereno, the new musical adaptation of one of the greatest love stories ever told, but reimagined for a 2022 audience. We got to hear from Peter Dinklage about why he relates to the main character and a whole lot more. What the tricky thing is for a modern audience, um, the original play by Rastand, it's very long and it's filled with incredibly long speeches. What if all those speeches were songs, because I think everybody can relate to a love song. You forgive the scratches, you know? That's part of singing, that's, that's your soul. It's, it doesn't matter, your voice isn't as important as what your, your soul is saying. My sole purpose on this earth is to love Roxanne. Does she know? The world will never accept someone like me and a tall, beautiful woman. Anybody could play Cyrano. I'm doing it because yes, I do have a built-in difference that uh, I could relate to in terms of like feeling less than the person you love or feeling unworthy. And I, but I think what the movie speaks to is everybody knows that feeling, not people who are physically different or whatever that would set us apart. Cause we're all set apart from each other, you know? So it's a thing that we all struggle with, hopefully, cause that also, can give you a sense of humor about things. And I think that's what Cyrano also does have. He has a sense of humor about himself at the same time. But his Achilles heel is this thing with Roxanne and how he doesn't really fully believe he can be loved by her. New York is a collection of villages. The old have been in charge since before the revolution until the new people invaded. HBO's The Gilded Age features a who's who of Tony Award winning Broadway stars, including Audra McDonald, Christine Baranski, Cynthia Nixon, and Kelly O'Hara. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. You've done a lot in your career, but I feel like this is the first time you've been a part of a TV show that everyone is sort of talking about every week and it's building buzz and it really, it's kind of like part of the conversation, the, what we used to call the water cooler conversation, right? right? Well, you know, I, I, I don't let myself get too big headed about that because I think, is it what everyone's talking about or just our community because it is packed full with all of our friends, right? But the ratings, the ratings are there. People, people are eating up the Gilded Age. I mean, there's something about this show that people are really ready for this story right now.
You know, as we were unfolding the script last in the last two years, really, um, I started to think, ooh, it's grossly timely. You're, you're right about not being part of that type of thing in most of my career. You know, Broadway has been, and theater it is and will always be sort of my main love. But I, I cannot tell you what a gift this has been, not only because it is something that we were able to do over this pandemic, but also because I feel like it's like this part of theater as well, and yet it's a television show. That's what it felt like in, in, in a way. It was all my friends. For the first time, I sort of felt like I fit in in a television show, where I usually, when I do TV, I'm always like, ooh, this is you know foreign territory. And this time it felt really at home. So it was great. We know that you know how to rock a period gown. <laughs> that, that, that was, you, you've done that before. We've seen that many times on Broadway. So let's talk about Aurora. She, we don't love her right off the bat. She's icy, she's a society lady. She is not welcoming necessarily, but I, I feel like I'm seeing little hints that she might warm up a little. You know, it's so funny with television um, and episodic television. It's it's not like theater or a, or a play. It's not where you have this arc and you go in and you, you know the backstory and you know the ending. We are living moments in this show. And so I don't, I cannot tell you honestly what they intended for Aurora, but what I know is what I want for Aurora. You know, we put it upon ourselves to sort of build that as we play it. And my hope and my fantasy is that as he's writing it, which he was writing it as we shot, you know, we didn't have all of this, the episodes of, of the 10 episodes, right. that they start to, that they start to see something that might just live on the edge a little bit for, for this society woman, because I want her to have that. But I really desperately want, as we go forward, for Aurora to be surprising and not yeah. just typical. I, I don't want that. We you called the wrong number. You have to call back. Help. I feel like the accidental wolf was sort of a great bridge, mm -hmm. right? Bet between your theater work mm -hmm. and, and now your TV work. And because that started as a short film and now you're about to shoot a third season, right? Of this of this show now. I think the gift that Arian Moye gave me from that, we did King Lear together, it was 2012. Um, he, he didn't know me as a musical theater person. He'd never seen me in a musical, never heard me sing. And so those little things that happen in life where you just come across somebody who's willing to uh, make all these efforts towards something. And I learned so much about camera. I learned so much about, you know, being on set and in those spaces. It's almost like I, I need, I had to have that before I could have anything else. And he, the fact that they're happening at the same time now being, you know, this season number two is released at the same time. And to be honest, we've shot season three and it's my favorite. Um, it, it really has been an enormous, uh, a gift that I don't think was an accident. You recently shared a photo of you in Follies that I loved, of you as one of the, the showgirls in Follies. What what do you think when you look back at that girl and, and how much that girl's been able to accomplish in, in these My, 20, 20 years? You're a good, you're good at your job. I just almost got a little tear in my eye when you think about <laughs> that girl. I had no idea what my th future was in this town. I had come out of my first Broadway show pretty down. It was not mm -hmm. what I expected. And then I joined this group of really, really beautiful people. And I just remember thinking, if it's like this, I am more, I am everything I risked and everything I sacrificed, leaving my family and having no, no connections. It, it's all happening right here. And if, you know, if I have never have anything else, that's okay. And I didn't even understand when we were not a success. I didn't even understand because to me, it was the most beautiful experience of my life. And we can also tell you HBO has just picked up the Gilded Age for a second season. New episodes from season one are streaming now on HBO Max with the season one finale airing March 21st. There's still a lot more to talk about on this edition of the Broadway show. Coming up, He's the youngest star of The Music Man. We're getting to know one of Broadway's fresh new faces, 10-year-old Benjamin Pajak. Plus, play ball. We're bringing the heat with the cast of Take Me Out, including Jesse Tyler Ferguson and more. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.
Thanks for staying with us for this latest episode of The Broadway Show. So glad you're here. You got Trump. The Musing Man is Broadway's biggest opening since live theater returned to New York City. And while it's Tony Award winners Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster on the marquee, the revival also marks the debut of 21 young Broadway newcomers, including Benjamin Pajak. He is this week's Fresh Face. Hi, my name is Benjamin Pajak, and I play Winthrop Peru in the revival of Music Man on Broadway. I started loving theater when I first saw Phantom on Broadway. I was six years old. I was in the house. I put on the mask and the vest and the cape, and I fell in love with it. I loved the singing and the acting and the lighting cues. And ever since then, when I started watching Broadway shows, it just got better and better. I still remember when I was two years old, I fell in love with Adina Menzel's voice in Wicked. That's all I would listen to to go to sleep. It just was hypnotizing me. My mom found out about the open call. She was just casually sitting there, scrolling on her phone through Facebook. And then she sees, oh, an open, an open call. She says, hey, Benjamin, I found an open call. Do you want to go to New York this Saturday? And I said, sure, I'll do it. So she goes to Apple Music and finds Gary Indiana. It wasn't even in the right tune. So I learn the songs and I show up at the audition and I start singing in the, in the wrong tune. I knew Hugh Jackman when I first auditioned for it. I knew him in one movie, Wolverine. I didn't know Sutton Foster at all. I knew that she was in Anything Goes. I knew that she was an amazing, talented actor and I knew that she had an amazing voice. So I knew that they were two of the most amazing actors. But I think over time we the three of us bonded with each other. At this point, I consider them more friends than stars at this point. When I found out that there were gonna be kids in it, I flipped out because I had people to actually talk to who understand things that I like and things that I do. That was an, another thing that I was very excited about. Music Man got me into playing cornet. So I think I want to, even though when this stops, I think I want to keep going on with that, possibly learn trumpet as well. I want to do Love Never Dies. I want to be the kid in Love Never Dies. And I also wanted to do Billy Elliot, even though I'm not really a dancer, but <laughs> you know how it is. Broadway is back and so is the Broadway show. Thanks for sticking around. Batter up. The revival of Take Me Out is finally about to return to Broadway. The play was scheduled to open before COVID shut down theaters. It's about America's favorite pastime and one of the game's favorite players coming out as gay. We talked to the stars of Take Me Out, including Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Jesse Williams and more. Take Me Out was a play I saw at the Public Theater and then again on Broadway because I loved it that much. It's one of my favorite theater going experiences that I've ever had. And it's a play that I never thought I would get to do. I was scared of it, to be honest. Like that, that was one of the reasons I wanted to do it. It's a miraculous play. Richard Greenberg is obviously one of the most prolific, wonderful living playwrights in America today. And now the final uh, ingredient has been meeting all these guys and just being like, you know, how, how lucky we are that we all get along and that we're all like on the same page and really devoted to like digging as deep into this thing and making it as good as possible. I grew up on baseball. The themes in this, in this play uh, are, are, are very meaningful to me and, and, and bring a lot of things to dig things up for me. There's some surprises. There's some surprise, there might be a little skin, um, maybe even from me, I don't know. If you like baseball and you don't know anything about theater, you're gonna love the play. There's so many great insights and the playwright has such a love for baseball. It's so witty, it's so smart, but also the topics. And, you know, unfortunately it's still relevant. I thought uh, by now, 15, what's almost 20 years later, that uh, this would be old hat and, you know, this would be kind of a, you know, a time capsule plate, but unfortunately it's, it's so timely and so relevant. This is one of 
the best plays I've ever seen on, on stage. So I'm so excited for people who don't know Take Me Out to discover it, and for people who love it already to rediscover it. It's an incredible piece of material. We're working really hard at, at cracking it open and putting it back together and doing that over and over again for you, for you all. So uh, I, I know that I know it's going to do very well. This is the Broadway show and we're back in just a few. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.